resistant current and it also tells you that the fault clearing time or the response time of that uh, low voltage circuit breaker is approximately 175 milliseconds or 0.175 seconds. The system has been determined as to, to be grounded, okay? And also the, the program will automatically populate the incident energy, flash protection boundary, and the category level. Now the reason the program has set this system to be grounded is because you're connected to a transformer that is configured to be a white, uh, white, white solid on the secondary. If we were to change this to a low resistance grounded system, and we rerun our arc flash calculation, We will automatically notice that the incident energy has increased uh, quite, quite significantly to 11.23. Our previous value used to be 8.66 calories per centimeter square. If you go back to the bus editor, go to the ArcFlash page, you will now notice that the system has been configured or determined to be ungrounded. These are definitions uh, that you can refer back in, in your IEEE 1584 standard. At this point, what I would like to do is move on to some specific r -flash examples for different types of systems that would illustrate uh, the power of the program as far as simulating multiple operating conditions and, uh, and how it actually determines uh, the incident energy for different uh, types of uh, systems. For this particular example, called R-Flash Example 1, we have two simple radial systems <coughs> that are fed from uh, commercial power uh, utility systems at 12 kV, and you go through a, through a transformer, which will step down the voltage to 4.16 kV. For this system, we have some uh, primary protection. We have some primary protection in the form of fuses or high voltage circuit breakers and relays. And we also have some secondary protection for the, for the mains of the, of the switch here. And we have also some motor protection. All these different elements have to be analyzed differently in order to determine the worst case uh, incident energy that could be released at different locations in this system. E-type arc flash will automatically perform multiple scenarios when you fault one bus in the system. If I go ahead and fault bus A, which is the secondary of transformer 1, I could automatically see that I need to calculate the incident energy that could be released at different locations in the program. The program will automatically give me results for a fault on the bus itself, for a fault on, this, on the load protected devices, or for faults on the line side of the main source PV. By simply placing a fault on the bus, the program will give me three sets of values for incident energy, or three possible scenarios. And this will actually reduce the amount of work that you have to, to do in order to, to find the most conservative amount of incident energy that could be released in the event of a fault anywhere on this uh, secondary side equipment of this transformer. If you go ahead and run the arc flash calculation, we will be able to see the results for those different locations. The program will automatically display the arc flash results for a fault on bus A which will be this location, uh, bus A location. If we wanted to see what will be the, the results for, for an arc fault on the line side of, of main CVA, we will have to open our report. And we will do that by clicking on our report manager icon and going to our result tab. On the result tab, we would open the arc flash analysis 
report. The arc flash analysis report <coughs> for the bus that we were looking at, which is bus A, will show you the uh, different results of incident energy that were calculated for this type of equipment. For a fault at the bus itself, the program has determined that the uh, amount of incident energy that could be released is about 0.87 calories or categories, category zero. Most likely this is because of the fast operating time of the protective device here, which is op operating on the instantaneous region. In this case, we have a six cycle operation of the instantaneous uh, setting of the relay protecting this equipment. Therefore, the, f the, f the top part of this report will show you all the results for a fault on the bus itself. The, the, the table below which will be a tabulated uh, set of results, will show you the results for individual locations within that equipment. In the case of uh, the load breaker called CVV, the program determines that the most conservative solution for a fault on CVV while you're working on CVV energized would be that the main protected device called main CVA would trip that fault and it would take it approximately six cycles, and the en incident energy release will be 0.866 calories per centimeter squared. However, if you were working on the main CV, main, C main CVA, the program has determined a more conservative solution, assuming that main CVA itself cannot trip this fault, and therefore you will have to rely on an upstream protected device to trip that fault. In this case, the primary protection will come into play, which is fuse one. So the program will automatically select fuse one as the protected device that would trip the fault on the line side of main, main CVA. Therefore, for a fault on the line side of CVA, CV, main CVA, the incident energy release will be 2.364 uh, calories per centimeter square, and the hazard risk level will be increased now to a category one. Therefore, if you're working on the line side of the main protected device, you could be exposed to a potentially larger amount, amount of incident energy. So at this point, uh, we, can, we can understand how the program report, uh, reports the results in, in the analysis report. And it shows you the results for our buses and for individual scenarios with all the protected devices connected to that particular equipment. The next item that I would like to talk about is to just show you how the program can quickly uh, generate time current characteristics and how, how it actually checks the, the response of the devices. For this particular system, we have the primary and secondary relays and, and uh, motors connected in this system. If we go to our coordination mode and we quickly check the coordination of this system, to, to see how the program is actually determining the, 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 the amount of incident energy release in the circuit. If we highlight all the protected devices uh, all the way down to the motor load connected on, on, on bus A, we can generate a time current characteristic for the system. Using this time current characteristic, the program went on to determine that for a fault on main, on main A, for a fault on this location, which will be main CVA, the device that would trip the fault will be OCRA. If you look at the coordination of the system, <coughs> OCRA will be this relay, of, uh, as I'm showing, hi uh, highlighted in red, will be the first device to operate. If the fault was on the line side of, uh, of this uh, main, main breaker, main CVA, the next device to operate will have to be fuse A. If 
confuse uh, 